I have to begin with an apology to those who are new to the Latin Mass, that we did not have missiles to give you to follow along in English the words of the priest during the Mass. So that's a resolution I have. We, we don't often have funerals here because even some of our parishioners are buried at Mount St. Michael and the funerals take place there. So I will be sure to get those for future. But even if you didn't have a missile to follow the English of the Latin that's being sung, it certainly is a beautiful Mass, the Requiem Mass. And you can see the beauty of the liturgy. But I would like to share a little bit with you some of the words in the Requiem Mass. And first, just to give you a few biographical details of Richard, he was born in July of 1948, so didn't quite reach his 70th birthday. In 1975, after four years in the military and after graduating from college with a degree as an electrical te technician and a minor in mathematics, he moved up to Coeur d'Alene, and that's when I first met him. Richard loved God, wanted to serve God, and thought perhaps a vocation as a religious brother was God's will for him. And so on May 31st, 1975, he entered the religious life at our seminary in Coeur d'Alene. He became a novice on September 8th, 1975, receiving the name of Brother Camillus Marie of Our Lady of the Roses. A year later, he made his first profession of vows for one year. And then after that year expired, he professed vows for three years. Meanwhile, while he was in his three-year vows, we had moved to Mount St. Michael in Spokane, and Richard began to wonder if it really was God's will for him to be a religious. And so when those three years expired in July of 1980, he was not ready to make a professional final vows, so he decided, obtained permission to renew his vows for one year, one year to decide if he wanted to give his life to God forever through perpetual vows. And during the course of that year, he concluded that it was not his vocation. And as you know, he went on to become married, to have a family, two children, and he always remained very closely attached to our parishes here at what we call the City of Mary, which is very dear to him, and also Mount St. Michael. Over the years, I had many conversations with Richard, and one of the things that I can say is that he really loved his faith, and he also enjoyed speaking about his faith. He could keep you in a conversation for quite a while about anything, but especially when it came to religion. In fact, several years ago, I had some classes that lasted us several years. We had Bible study. We went through the entire Bible, and he came to many of those classes, and I remember whenever he came, he would be the last one to leave. And we would have, after the class was over, he'd have questions, comments, and we had some wonderful discussions. He also liked to talk about some of the books he had read. He was quite a reader. In fact, I still have a book that he gave me uh, several years ago at one of these classes that he read about the faith. So Richard was one, again, who dearly loved his faith, and I am sure he is very pleased with your presence here and with the beautiful Requiem Mass. As you know, Richard was taken from us unexpectedly, having a heart attack uh, just a little over a week ago. And fortunately, Father Casimir, the pastor at Mount St. Michael, was able to give him the sacraments. And I believe he was very well prepared to meet our Lord when he did pass away a few days later. But I mentioned I was going to talk to you a little bit about some of the words in Latin of the Mass, because many of you I know did not have a missal. But one part that always strikes me in the beautiful Requiem Mass 
is what we call the sequence, and it takes place between the epistle and gospel, and is called the Dies Irae. It's fairly lengthy. The choir sang it beautifully, alternating the men and women. This poem was written by a Franciscan in the 13th century. It has a beautiful, haunting melody, fitting for the occasion. And after I'm done reading at the altar, I go and sit and listen to the choir sing it. And I always enjoy reflecting upon the meaning of the words. In fact, I have to admit that it seems to me to have so much more meaning in Latin than in English. And for that reason, I've always taught it to my second year Latin students when they've had enough Latin to understand the various forms of the words. And we translate it. And I always tell them, you have to learn to think in Latin because it has so much more meaning. But a couple of phrases that always strike me is where it says, recordare Jesu pie, quod sum causa tua vie, which means remember, good Jesus, that I am the reason for your coming. That our Lord came in this world, in other words, for me, for all of us, to die for us. And of course, here we are in the season of Lent, reflecting upon that terrible passion and death and that tremendous love which led God the Son to give his life for our salvation. Another phrase that really strikes me is when it says, inter oves locum presta et ab edis me sequestra, staduens in parte dextra, which means, give me a place among the sheep on your right hand and separate me from the goats on the left. And it is an allusion to a story our Lord gave in the 25th chapter recorded by St. Matthew, the 25th chapter of his gospel about judgment. And our Lord says that the judge on the last day will be like a shepherd who at the end of the day and the sheep and the goats are together feeding and he brings them into the corrals and he separates the sheep from among the goats and he places the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And again, the prayer says, place me among the sheep on your right hand. So there are many beautiful uh, lessons in that wonderful poem, the Dies Irae, so beautifully sung at a requiem mass. But it all reminds us, it comes back to what our Lord says in the gospel. And that has to do with why he made us, why he created us, why we are here in this world. Yes, we are saddened that Richard was taken from us, it seems, prematurely. Not quite living what we would consider the average age. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is how well one is prepared to meet his maker. Because we know that day will come for each of us sooner or later. But it will come. And here we are in the season of Lent which is a time when we give up something, we do some penance, because we know we need to prepare to meet our Lord. And we recall those words in the gospel where our Lord says, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his soul? What a striking thought that the most important thing about life is getting to heaven. And that's our task in this world. There are a lot of other things that are important, but their importance pales in comparison to the one most important thing, and that is loving and serving God that we might be with him forever in heaven. I believe Richard fulfilled that reason, that purpose for his creation. As I told you, I know that he loved his faith and practiced it and loved God and loved his friends, and had many friends. Let us remember the repose of his soul, and let us learn from his life to love God above all things, and to serve him faithfully. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.